Welcome to In the Back of the Ute. Today I've got Eric Tyne from uh, Heal with Ease and I'm very excited because he's just uh, installed an energy tower and uh, we're trying to lift the energy of the country and I had no idea until a couple of weeks ago that this was what was going to happen but on one of my latest videos I've reached 2,000 subscribers so this was my goal for this year and so I'm rewarding myself with the energy tower. So welcome uh, Eric to In the Back of the Ute. Thank you very much for coming. Um, can you just explain your little bit of who you are, why you are healing and why it's important and, and your background? All right, thanks for having me anyway, Tamsin. Pleasure. You'll enjoy your tower. Yes. That'll be, uh, <laughs> keep working well on into the future. So. A little bit about me, Kathy and I started here with these oh, 15, 18 years ago, which is a basic energy healing business. We use homeopathy and other energy remedies. So we've grown from the homeopathy, we, we call ourselves quantum healers now. So we work on people, land, animals, properties, you name it, we work on it and all over the world. Um, so it's grown along quite well, all using energy techniques and different parts of it that we've learnt on the way through. So, so different people have come into our life and existence and shown us something else to, to go down a path and we follow that path down and, and have learnt from that. I'm a dog trainer, farm manager, bush person, shearer, just come from the bush and so I'm pretty down to earth and so this is all a bit new to me, this stuff. But seeing the results on my animals and my family and, and the land around us we live on has been quite, a, 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 quite astounding in time and we live a totally different life to the norm. We homeschooled our kids, stepped away from the system 20 years ago and been out on our own and never looked back since sort of thing. Um, so it's been a long journey. So what was that very first moment where you thought, oh, energy, I think there's something in this because we still have the naysayers, yep. possibly because they can't see what energy is. Well, well our, our start was was human health or our health or family's health at the start and that, that stepped us away from the, the orthodox or the industrial or whatever system you want to call it these days. So we stepped into homeopathics was our first step and into Reiki and, and into those sorts of things early and that was 20 years ago. Um, talked about doing it, our animals and our, the lady we were using said I, I can supply your remedies but we can't help you treat because I can't understand animals so we went down a big rabbit hole of learning and how to work with animals so I started I was managing 14,000 acres at the time sheep and cattle and so we started using it on our stock animals and on our family and just seeing the results at that point flicked me over to to the least invasive form of medicine I've ever come across and then as we've gone along, we've developed different processes within that model. And for the last oh, probably 10 years, we've been using muscle testing extensively. Um, we imported an instrument from England, so we started into the different learnings along the way have taught us how to teach this, have faith in distance. Like you hear about all this stuff, but it's not until you put under pressure and have to perform or have to save an, an animal in Northern Queensland, like a lady rang us up when the horse, uh, what was that? The Equine influenza? No, nah, it wasn't influenza, it was, what's the one with the bats? The, oh, the, Hendra. Hendra. Mm. So she had a heap of horses that went down crook and vets wouldn't come near a place, no one would work on them. Um, we couldn't get remedies there in time. So we were tested to work distantly. So we, we worked distantly and pulled all those horses through. They, it wasn't Hendra, it was botulism in the end. Uh, they'd got something in the hay, but we got them all through. They all went on to perform and, and quite good. So that proved to us that the distance, the tools we had, we could work at distance. And then other things have triggered us, like we were treating, we've been treating a lot of people, so we're down the rabbit hole all the time looking for research and information and looking at different techniques and, and it dawned on us about two years ago we needed a more quantifiable universal scale to look at 
to, to work on health, or to measure health against other people and where things were at. And we started working with Hertz and, and the, the, what is it, the consciousness, Hertz of consciousness, and there's a, a whole book around that sort of stuff. Uh, so we started transferring that to testing what was needed at that particular time, where were people at, so we could work out what level they were running with in the background, in the Hertz levels, as well as a percentage against the physical percent potential. And I suppose if you in the, the radionic world, they talk about general vitality. So our percentage is similar to general vitality, but the Hertz is in the background. We, we're checking that alongside that. And when we started with that, we started testing country to see what properties and what environment was running at because if it works on people, we know everything's connected, land, people, animals, all connected. So we started measuring, measuring land and while we're traveling around and we drove from our place in New England to Sydney down to Adelaide and, and measure, just looking from the side of the road, you can see different management strategies, you can see national parks and all sorts of things. You start testing potential of country and all that way in that 2000 k's we saw nothing that was running over 150 hertz wow. right and we saw cropping country that was running at 30 hertz um, and quite obvious what's been happening and then you see other even regenerative grazed or, or hrm sort of management where there's cell grazing and you can tell what a paddock looks like when you drive past the road that's mm. that's cell grazing and that's not and and you tested them and they were they might have been the highest they might have been up in 150 and since adding that into our testing and then working at how we can change those energies and lift those energies and what is the key drivers to draining those energies to those levels it, it's just changed our healing changed land healing changed the whole lot it, it doesn't stop any other practices you can do whatever you want but if you haven't got this the hertz value as i say in behind it just retards everything so you're always trying to feed, feed, feed to get over this, this bump. But if the energy's there, your input costs and your, everything's a lot smaller and it wants to help you. The earth should want to help you, like yeah. land wants to help you. It's, yeah. just, it's just not, we're at the bottom of the matchstick and there's nothing left to go. So my question then is, how come it went from optimum Hertz level down to these low levels. Look, I, I'm, I'm only surmising, and I think it's just something that's naturally happened over the over the last sixty thousand years that environments change, things run down. The the systems and the the processes that we're farming with aren't supporting it as well as it could be. Um, environmental things, all sorts of factors. The way the the world's changed in that time. I don't like laying blame on anything. It, it, it's where we're at now and, and it's the way we, we've just got to move forward. We've got to take new ideas, new technologies and, and try and make a difference because yeah. if we keep down and people say, oh, we're heading for desertification, well, it's only the lack of energy. It, mm. It's just, there's nothing left and we're in the bottom of the cup and there's nothing left. Mm. And it's not until we can work out and, and there's a lot of people doing a lot of amazing things out there with, with the grazing and microbial stuff and soil life and all these regenerative practices, like amazing sort of work going on. But if some of the, the there's hidden energy blockages there that aren't being attended to, that we need to look at it more holistically, more as a, as a big picture, not just this, this part, this part, this part. Yeah. Uh, and, and some of those blockages we'll never understand. Yeah. They're, they're environmental traumas, they're cultural traumas, the different, um, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Stuff that I'll never even understand and that under, have the complete knowledge of. So can we hear your story then when you, uh, you said that you'd been doing all these correct practices but your hertz was only, what, 350? Yeah, for ourselves, we started with ourselves and, and we'd been, like, if you're going to experiment, you must experiment on yourself and your own animals because that's what we do. Like, you've you got to try that first. And, and at that stage, we worked out, we'd been down the healing journey, tried lots of different things for a long time. We we're pretty well people, so it wasn't like we're dire straits needed help. We just, 
needed a bit of help in the right direction and, and a bit of shaping. We were 15 years in and then when we come into these Hertz sort of ideas and theories and stuff, and if you look at the, oh, I can't even think of the name, the, the conscious, Hertz of consciousness, and they look at different stages, energy levels of Hertz creates the, the feelings and emotions you express. Um, so we looked at it, we were running at 330 or 40 Hertz at that point of time, and we thought, well, 15 years and this is all we had because no one ever looked at it before like we live a clean life we eat good food we basically pretty organic as much as we can we we just not a particularly one vegan or thing we good average diet and we don't use any chemicals we don't have many medication in the house so we're basically pretty clean and not yeah just good fashion bush diet sort of thing yeah. um, and so we so we thought, well, if we can lift these energies, if we can work on them, so we, I played around with it for a while. I thought, we'll lift ourselves to, to 600, see if we can do it. So we, we played around with a couple of techniques and we lifted ourselves to 600 hertz. And we sat there and were, were shaking like this for three days, like, wow, we can do this, but we don't want to do that with everyone in a big hit sort of thing. <laughs> so anyway, us being us and wanting to, me being me, trying to think how far we can we push this. And we got the boundaries restricted in every, all the information we can come across. We lifted ourselves to a thousand hertz, and we sat there and shook again for another week. And we thought, well, it's still working. <laughs> but what it was was we had no boundaries. We had no, of course, we'd done so much healing work. There was nothing restricting the growth. Now everyone has their natural boundaries, whether it's spiritual soul, how far down the journey you want to go, inherited. Um, genetic, all sorts of things of the being, has natural boundaries in there to stop you lifting to the next level until you get the, the learning or the information you need to clear that and move to on. We'd done so much work that we'd cleared most of those blockages. So we just lifted really quickly. And, and since then, we've found that most of the information that's been written by all these people about this is is just thoughts and processes and dows and things like that and the limits are, are nowhere near what they've put the limits on so that and they like they they get into talking big terms enlightenment at a thousand of fourteen hundred and all this sort of fancy stuff it's just energy it's nothing different you just this life you if you run at a thousand or two thousand or three thousand four thousand hertz you just have more reserves to recover quicker and that's what it means. It doesn't stop you getting the odd flu or it doesn't stop you getting a bit crook from time to time. But if you've got reserves, you just bounce back. If you run at 30 hertz and you're crook, it takes a lot. Your body hasn't got the energy in it to, to clear the problem and sustain or, or lift. Yeah. So there's no reserves. It doesn't stop you getting crook, but what it does do is gives you reserves to recover and bounce back. Yeah. And then you'd think about landscape. A lot of properties are only running at 40 hertz. Mm. So you can feed it all you like, but there's nothing there to give it the reserves to bounce back. Nothing there to give it that life and that vitality. You fix the problem, but you still got nothing left to drive. And you're trying to bring that all out from within. So when you try and bring it from within, you've got to have everything so going so hard that it's nearly impossible to feed it something for health. Um, you can change the system and you can have life and things like that, but it's nearly impossible to feed something to health. Mm. And, and our modern chemical driven or pharmaceutical model or, or holistic model is all about feeding to health. Well, the chemical model is kill this, then try and reprove it. But, but all the holistic models are all still about feeding. Mm. We're not looking at the big picture, the whole wholehearted, the, the energies mm. behind it. And, and culture over the years has has come from working with energies. Mm. They didn't have all this kill to, to repair. They, they had to work within the model they had. And, and this, like the universal energy tower we put in today, it's, it's a combination of old, old knowledge. Like it, it's 10, 2000 years old, they talk about power towers and stuff in England and all that sort of old information. And uh, how they help the environment. And you talk about the electric culture world where it's all on fire at the moment, getting excited about the electric culture world. But it's still 
1930s, early early 30s sort of stuff. Biodynamic stuff that got went in it. Their theories from 1910, 1912, Rudolf Steiner sort of stuff. We've got to keep growing on that and keep expanding and, and developing our knowledge. And, and then there's other sides of it that are more, even the radionic stuff is still back in the early 1900s sort of stuff. So all of it has been suppressed again and you're woohoo or you're crazy if you try and go into it, but there's something in it and it's more than we can explain. See, what I love as well is that no limit. Don't put your optimum value on it because you don't know what your maximum potential is. And that's why I'm actually quite um, anti-labeling things and yep. people because you're putting yourself in a box when you give yourself a label but you're then blocking the ability to really go for it and just accelerate and, and improve and, and, and reach for the stars if, if you can. Yeah. And this is what I love about these towers is that, so w with the intention when you actually put it in, can you just describe what, what, it, what is in the tower and what, um, what is that sort of telling and communicating with, with Mother Nature and the cosmos? and? Yeah, I, I can go into it generally what we've done with it. We, we, have, um, we have a prep in the bottom to, to work on, not so much, it, it works with cell regeneration. It's tested for every place, so they're always different. Um, yours is a, a tissue salt sort of blend. Um, the and then we've got one in the top, so we're, that's taking from the, the field broadcaster sort of model, above ground, below ground. Um, paramagnetic rock and silica sand, a blend in there with the humic, some humates and things like that. That's a bit from the power tower sort of model. So these are all energies that then the, the, the copper we use is a, it's just a gathering device to, to gather the, the scalar waves, gather frequencies and accumulate them and then put them in the, into the soil and, or into this environment to work. We've got a bit of a radionic just drive in there that, that is, we can impregnate our intent in there. Now the intent is, is very clean and holistic. It's about, yeah, once again, the unlimited potential, um, work on physical and, and spiritual and environmental barriers and, and what's accompanied in that. So there's a lot of information in there that we've gleaned from our healing work that we've transferred across that like a property is a living being. So all the things that affect a living body is, is exactly what affects, affects a, a property or a, a, any other life form, whether it's a dog, a horse, a property or whatever it is. And you've got to keep your intent pretty holistic, very holistic. Think about, you just don't want a place healthy and going like crazy and 40,000 pigs running on it because that's not holistic for anyone in the long term. So you've got to take into consideration parasitic plants and animals and, and pests and things like that to, but then a few wallabies, a few's all right, they're a native, but 200 or 300 on a small block is detrimental. So once again, you've got to keep it ecological and keep it sound. So you will have a few things, a few animals and a few other natives and a few, you might even have a few, a few pests if they're doing a job. Mm. But it's the excess of anything that causes a problem, mm. whether it's plants, animals, whatever it is, the excess. So, so the intent's been written that way, that it's a nice, stable, holistic intent to thing. The no barriers, barriers in energy level has come from our other healing and thinking you've, you put a barrier on something and and then you found out the barrier is not near enough, uh, so we don't know enough. So you just change it and you lift it and you change it and you lift it. And it, yeah, you need no limits um, because we don't know. And to be honest, I don't know. Who, who knows? Like, where can it go? Go and as you say, what can happen? Um, everything, plants, species, and all that. You talk about quorum sensing. That's only an energy signal. So how can environment change if the energy is right? We see gum forests that are running at 40 or 50 hertz. Well, that's the only energy there that can survive. And, and all your plants that come back as, as secession plants, well, they only get to that point because the energy's right for them to grow. 
So, so what happens if we can change all those energies? Can we change that succession, speed the succession up or change it to different species a lot quicker? Can we put a frequency out of something else that's more desirable and, and create that? But the limit, I don't know where the limit is, but until we get some basics right, we can't even experiment with the next step. Yeah. Like, and, and that might take five or six years to get the basics right. Yeah. Um, so we're pretty well at ground zero now. We're pretty well at ground zero. Yeah. And, and in most places. Mm. Oh, we haven't done much overseas with these towers. I have tested a couple of places, done a little bit of work distantly overseas, but they're not much better. Mm. Even the good soft climate in Wales and things like that, they're in the same boat. Yeah. Same boat, they're, they're at ground zero. They've got nothing left, nothing in that fuel tank mm. to drive recovery. We need to look at recovery at a holistic level. Well, I'm really excited and I will definitely document because I love um, creating videos, as you know, and photos and stuff of the improvements and the differences that I see. And it's not necessarily an improvement, is it? It could just be something is acting really differently. Yeah, it could be, it could be in acting differently. It could be how you wake up in the morning, your energy levels. It could be how you sleep, how uh, attitude change right to the whole house. It's a living being. Every part of the of the property, the owners, the animals, everything is a living living being. <coughs> so we've got to look at the whole picture. And you might see a change in a horse's behaviour. You might see all that sort of stuff can happen. Yeah. Like it's not just working on the dirt, it's working on the whole picture. Mm. Oh, I'm really excited. Yeah. So anyway, thank you, Eric. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. And I'm so pleased I got one of your energy powers. <laughs> Number 18, by the way. <laughs> good on you. I hope it'll go good. I look forward to the results. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Thanks Eric. Thank you. Fabulous.